In this video, we're going to discuss whether something like Satan or evil really exists. And I understand there's different dimensions to Satanism, but from your typical standpoint, your typical belief of there being a devil, some sort of evil, an outside source making others do evil, does that really exist? The answer is no. I'll start with a scientific perspective so it's not left up to so much being my opinion, and then we'll go into a spiritual kind of psychological aspect. But from a scientific standpoint, when a scientist scans the human brain of, say, a psychopath, we find that the parts of the brain that are responsible for remorse or empathy do not activate. It is inactive. They literally cannot feel remorse or empathy for other people in the way that we would. They do not have that capability. So it's not to excuse them. It's not to say that if they're doing dangerous crimes, we shouldn't imprison them and give them therapy and keep them away from society. But it is to say, to the fullest extent, that it's not their fault in a sinful manner. You really can't hold them accountable for that. They're, they're starting with a human body, a brain, that has a disadvantage to this good and evil game and who's going to go to heaven and who's going to go to hell. That makes no sense. And I don't think any loving God that is all-knowing would really look at that individual and just ignore that. Go ahead and put them in hell. No, I don't think that's how that would work. And say there was an outside evil source... That just, that's, that's not that individual, right? That's the devil. That's a demon that took over their body. So even from that standpoint, it, it, it wouldn't make sense to hold them accountable in that way. Also note, like some other videos talk about, how it's not like you're choosing your own thoughts even. If I were to ask you a question, there's a pause, a knowing, and then a thought arises and you answer me. You have nothing to do with that knowing. Just the thought arises, you identify with the thought, you say it, and then you think, I chose that thought. But at the core, free will doesn't even exist in the way we assume. Right? So, even a functioning brain, based on its environment and how it was raised, its action and reaction is like a computer program. Say I'm, I'm in the grocery store and I accidentally bump somebody's car and they turn around and scream at me and just yell. In that moment. Yes, that is their reaction. But in a sense, in their past, what made them respond in that way? There's this kind of built-in programming where that's their response. Oftentimes, all times, we do not have a choice in what we're doing. The only choice you have, in a sense, is to be aware. And awareness itself is always present. Awareness isn't phenomenal. The illusion of self is what's phenomenal. So... Evil itself is not an outside source. It's not an entity making people do wrong. And this isn't to take anything away from the divine either, right? Because look at it like this. When somebody says it's all in God's hands or put it in God's hands, what are they doing in a sense? But they're giving away free will. They're saying whatever's going to happen is going to happen. It's no different than what I'm saying when I say that you are awareness and awareness is the whole or that there is no chooser specifically in that. Right? Like prior, we talked about how if I asked you a question, there's a pause, the knowing, then the thought arises, the answer, and you say it. And you identify with the thought, so you then assume that, hey, I'm the thinker, right? But in that pause, in that awareness, is the knowing. That's where that arose from. And there is no choice in that. You have no choice in that. It's no different than saying, hey, it's all in God's hands. It just seems kind of atheistic if I say there's not a God entity or a devil entity. It's all just one thing. Because in a way I could be saying that I'm God. But take that term away. It's, it's the same contradiction Christ in the Bible would have of I'm God but the Son of God. How is that? It's because you recognize in this meditation, in this presentness that, oh, I'm the whole. I'm all of this. God. But as a human, what do we call smaller humans? Like a son, a child, right? Well, a human compared to the whole would be like a son, a son of God. That's how that contradiction would play out. If you take it literal, no sense whatsoever. But metaphorically, from a meditative kind of recognition, you see, oh, that's what he, he, would, he would have meant, that character would have meant. That I am God, the whole, but also the son of God, a child of God. Just this human compared to the world is a child. And, you, and we're not even contained to the world. We're talking about the whole universe, everything, right? Everything that's all conceivable. So it's not to take anything away from the divine. It's just to be raw with you about reality. Your salvation 
lies in your hands, just like your own happiness is in your own hands, right? What happens when you say, I'm going to give it all to God, and this relaxation occurs? Happiness. You're just accepting, right? And that's no different than what I'm telling you to be. Just be present, aware, and be accepting. And recognize there's no free will in that sense. There's no choice. As contradicting as that sounds, right? And that's the beauty of it. Because you could deeply assume you have a choice in it in a way, but you really don't. Your awareness, it's eternal, and you can just play. So this isn't to be atheistic, right? It's not to take anything away from the divine side. But I'm also not going to give the divine side an entity either. That would be ignorance. Ignorance of what is. And as long as you're living in any kind of ignorance, that's why there's never a constant happiness and awareness. You're just going back and forth between an illusion of self. And what you think is happiness 